My name is Becky Friedman. I am a public school teacher. I work on a podcast called Ask an Atheist with Sam Mulvey, and I uh, serve um, with a camp called Camp Quest Northwest. I was visiting La Brea in Southern California, those are the tar pits, and saw that there were creatures that had existed at one point that don't exist now any longer. And um, I was really fascinated by that. I think I was about six or seven years old. And at the same time in the gift shop, I was drawn to a Lucy book. It was an illustrated book um, and uh, started asking questions about that, read it with my dad. Dad read it to me and, and had that question about uh, why, why do we have monkeys and apes and humans all together when we all started out as monkeys? And he started that explanation of evolution and I was fascinated and went from there. If it's sunny and it's a school day, I love watching my students um, in their sports games outside and supporting them. Um, I love taking advantage of the beautiful sound, the, the Puget Sound, the Salish Sea that's here. Um, and sometimes even when it's sunny, we stay indoors and we do things like work on our lesson plans or work on our uh, audio production. I'm marching on April 22nd as a call to action for um, our politicians, our elected officials, our candidates, and our voters to see the importance of science and invest in science funding, in science advocacy um, for anything like the EPA, the NIH. Those are things that keep our world and our bodies and ourselves and our economy healthy and sustainable. Well, my field is public education, and I wish that people that weren't educators, as well as educators themselves, knew that being a teacher is being a scientist. We look at our students, we want them to learn something, we want them to master something. We make a hypothesis about what we can do to help students master a subject or master content. We say, if I do this, if I teach in this way, then they will be able to do this particular skill or perform this particular um, act. And then we say, because they will have learned it in this way. And we test that on a regular basis. And when we can reflect on our own practice as, as educators, um, then we can actually utilize that scientific process as a way to help raise the floor, lift our knowledge, and, um, and, become, and, and help both teachers and our students uh, reach success. My role as a teacher is primarily in language education. And I initially entered college uh, intending to double major in both Spanish and biology. And I took biology for my first semester and got a D in biology because I had failed every single test and quiz and hadn't got done well on the lab reports. But the reason I got a D and not an F is because by the final exam, I scored an 87% on that final exam, which to me says I've learned from my mistakes and now I really understand the material. I continued with the second semester and only managed to get a C. Still improving, but still only a C. And when it came time to uh, request an advisor, to request a, a, an advisor within the biology department, I was counseled out. I said, I was told, you know what? No one's ever gonna give you some good research opportunities when you have a D and a C for your first semesters of biology. And so I think that that was one of the challenges that um, I wish that I had pushed back against because to me, being able to, earn, to understand biology at the end of the semester is more important than the final grade. Um, and, and I wish that I had persevered through that. I live right next to a hospital and two, three, four times a week, I hear medevac helicopter coming in and out. And I think that's someone's best day of their life because they're getting an organ and it's some family's worst day of their life because they've lost someone that they treasure or that's important to them. And I really would love to uncover a sustainable and financially uh, uh, effective way um, and scientifically uh, viable way to um, be able to create um, organs and tissues um, to be able to address our, our organ and tissue shortage around the world. I really want to wait for that, for that day when I'm a doddering old teacher and my students report that their mom's kidneys are growing in just fine. Um, and I say, you know what? We had to wait for someone to, uh, to no longer be with us to be able to use a kidney in someone that was struggling and my kids to be like, whoa, that's so weird. And I can't wait for that day. And if that day could come sooner, then I would be thrilled.